of the bench. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange, but at least I keep my word. While I'm back at the letters club, I was the, I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, David. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Lori told me he didn't even want to join the clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back in her seat. Don't worry guys, David always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. You and David can become good friends too. Uh huh. This is Sayori. Mm -hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, you even brought me something today, you know. But wait, Sayori. Hey, me? Um, uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gestures from you is a pleasant surprise. I'll make, it may make me happy no matter what. Is, is that so? 
yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Here he reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention. You don't usually read it. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. And I enthusiastically take the book. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activity for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Lauren and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Mitsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down in the nearest desk. I'm not supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this. I guess I could always read some of the, the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Yuri's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, so... Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of the literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place. It's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do things to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori's talk is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberate like this. Oh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Uh, cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. Sayori is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, I open my eyes to find Sayori's face, filling my vision. I nearly fell out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. written all over your face. Eh, 
so you already glanced it out at yourself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in rush this morning. Look at your hair is sticking out all around here. I run my fingertips down the side of Suri's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And, here, and there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. Look, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you that about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry. But you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Yes? Hey, be careful. The button might come on. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even like, fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever button it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so, uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh. No, it's not worth it at all. Sayori, Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Yuri puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, he wouldn't even let me do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. And I didn't say anything. Anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's a pop-up hotel with me sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica Summer calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yeah. David, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I felt the sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. yeah. My realization is, I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everybody is ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Suki and Yuri relatively comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. 